This is a quick tour of our home video streaming room. Um, first thing I'll mention is that I remodeled this myself uh, starting in 2019. I have an on-air light, which I really like. It's just a red light bulb on the wall and I, I control it with a switch right here. And you can see it just goes on and off. Um, I kind of set it up as a not really a lark, but I didn't expect to use it a lot. We use it all the time now because so, this room gets so much use. So the first thing I want to mention is that um, there will be blackout curtains there to kind of control the lighting. You can open those up and have natural lighting, but I have everything kind of calibrated for the the main, like the ceiling lights, um, these track lights here, and then this light here. So a uh, person that's going to stream sits in this chair. This is how I will find my wife here. Like during the school here, my wife is down here like all day, every day, streaming video classes and it's worked out really well for her. Now we've got a, a main camera over there. We have some other cameras and microphones here. We have this main light. We have this practical kind of accent light in the back. And then we've got the, the main computer set up here and then the HDMI switcher. This is the heart of the operation, the switcher. This is an ATEM, Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro. Um, <clears throat> this is sort of the more expensive version. There's a cheaper one, which is called the ATEM Mini. And the difference between between the two of them, they both switch and they both appear as a webcam to a computer, which is pretty cool because that means that as you're, so I'll switch over here to the output view. So as I'm, I'm looking here, look at that guy. Hi, how you doing? Um, I switch between all these different views. You can see here, um, whatever view I'm switching to will just be part of that webcam feed. So I don't need to do anything in software on the computer. I do everything over here. Okay, next is, so in this case, I'm outputting to a PC. This is my wife's work laptop. And you can see it just input right here, just like a, just USB-C. But I could also input, this could be a Mac, uh, PC, it doesn't matter. The other thing that the ATEM Mini Pro does that the ATEM Mini, the non-pro version, doesn't do, this can stream directly to like YouTube or Twitch live. Uh, I don't do too much of that, but it can also record. So I could stick like a USB thumb drive in or a, like a hard drive even, like a mechanical hard drive or an SSD, doesn't matter. Um, and I can record directly to disk. And so I could be doing this video right here and I could be switching around like that to all the different inputs and it's gonna record all that to disk for me. And I, I actually use that a lot, it's very useful. So I'll give you a little tour then of how I have everything else set up. You can see the important thing for me is cable wrap, keeping everything tidy. Um, and I, I will just mention also the different inputs. Let's, I'll start with input number four here. This is the iPad. And um, this is just set up so that my wife can draw on here and whatever she's drawing on the iPad appears as the output and that gets streamed into Zoom or Skype or whatever. Again, it just appears like a webcam. And it's easy, she just plugs this in. This is a USB-C um, to HDMI adapter. And I actually normally will have this, uh, this takes power as well. So she can just leave this plugged in, it'll stay as long as it's powered using uh, USB-C power, it'll just stay on and it's easy for her. And then we've got the main camera. We have a table cam here. So she can, this is what I call the textbook cam. So she can um, leave a textbook on the table. This actually, you can zoom in and out as well. So I can like zoom in, zoom out. This is an old uh, camcorder, a Canon camcorder, this guy right there. And that thing's like 15 years old, but I'm just using the HDMI output. And we've also got then input three is the table the full table cam and that's an old gopro that i found out in the woods um no id couldn't return it so i just repurposed it um found in a mountain a tarn in the mountains and let's see so then that's it that's the tour of the inputs oh you can do um you can do picture in picture as you can see and you can move it around that's a feature of the black magic atm mini pro atm mini as well so very nice um, yeah. Now, how do I have all this mounted? Well, for me, I wanted to make sure I could easily remove everything uh, quickly so that we could use this area as a regular table for gaming. And so the first step was to mount this strut, and this is either, you'll see it as unistrut or super strut or just strut, depending on who manufactures it. And this is just uh, some shaped metal with some slots in the back. And you can see the profile here looks like that. And so you can slide things into it, um, which is actually kind of what I originally intended, but I've 
I've just sort of used these like clamps and things instead. So most of this is, uh, most of the stuff that you see hanging off of the strut. Oh, let me mention before I go into that, how did I connect this to the ceiling? There's just some lag bolts that go through. You can see right there, there's one of those lag bolts. And then there's like a black nylon spacer and then there's a washer on the top and actually a washer between the spacer and the strut itself. And so that just, that washer keeps it from collapsing into the drywall and the nylon spacer gives it enough room to kind of mount things on it without bumping up against the ceiling. And that's it. Now, and that's like an inch spacer. Not a lot. Keeps it right tight up against the ceiling. And this is about a 10 foot length of strut right there. So all of this stuff that you see here, like this bar, this grip head, this clamp, I actually owned all this already. Um, I used to have a photo studio, and so this is all like photo gear, but it's not super expensive. Like that soup, that black clamp right there is probably the most expensive item. That's like a, a Manfrotto super clamp, but you can get knockoff clamps like that that are pretty cheap. This is a grip head that goes into the super clamp. And then this is just five eighths inch stainless steel tube that I buy in bulk and cut to, cut to length, but you can buy it pre-cut online. And then you can see that this 5 eighths inch tube is very standard because it fits the bracket that came with this LED light. So this light is just, it's very thin LED light. It's a Niewer 660 and you can actually, um, you can turn this on and off using this remote control and you can increase and decrease the brightness and that's really useful. Uh, but I have it dialed in basically to calibrate it to about 50%. Uh, next, we have this camera right here. This is a Fuji X-T3, and I'm just powering it, and I'm taking the HDMI output, and then that goes over here to this mixer. Um, <clears throat> next, we have, you saw this camcorder and then the GoPro, and these are both mounted to a single rod using, this is called a camera mount, a Manfrotto camera mount. It's like 15 bucks. You know, I, I, it came with uh, a super arm that I have. Or, yeah, magic arm, sorry. <laughs> Manfrotto magic arm. And uh, you can buy these individually though. So it's these little bits and bobs that kind of add up in terms of the cost. Here's, this is, a, and there's a pin here, like a, this actually is supposed to be for a super clamp. Um, this guy right here, this, I spent so much time dialing in the audio. If you know audio, you know, like getting good audio is really critical. So this is actually a shotgun mic and it's, can, I'll talk about how it's connected, but it's pointed down at the chair. And so what's great is you just sit down and we don't get a lot of feedback from the audio off the laptop because, and you don't have to really wear earphones if you don't want to, because this is very directional. So it's really just picking up from down there. Um, now, this is a Zoom F1 field recorder, which I already had, again, this was something that I had sitting around. There's other mics you could use, but I'm, I'm powering it and I'm taking the headphone output here. And then that goes down into the HDMI mixer, into the ATEM Mini Pro. And that little red light right there tells me that that mic, which is mic two input right here, is live. Um, and the nice thing about that is, you know, as you switch around, we'll look at the, you can see that as I'm speaking, um, or if I tap, tap that shotgun mic, I can tell that the, the levels are good. So I love this multi-view that the A10 Mini Pro spits out. Um, yeah, pretty, that's pretty much it. So all of, oh, one other thing is that all of these, like here's the light connector. So here's the, the 660 light. And you can see up here, this is a quick disconnect. So I can pull this whole unit down as a piece. Um, same for all these guys here, like these cameras. This goes up and you can see this is the power for the cameras, but these all unplug and I can take this whole unit down and just set it aside or set it in a closet or something. And the same for this microphone. Those all quick disconnect right around where that grip head is. Um, oh, and these grip heads, um, you can see that they're actually connected via a baby pin that is screwed into the strut itself. That is a special baby pin. That was like really the only the only special thing that I ordered. I just bought them on Amazon and they seem to work, work okay. I feel like the super clamp is probably a little sturdier in terms of connection, but they're also more expensive, so. That is it. That is the grand tour of the home streaming setup with the ATEM Mini Pro. Uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm at Ethan Schoonover on Twitter, and I'm happy to answer more questions.